Call the meeting to order if everyone will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Have the review and approval of the agenda. I've just got one question. Do we want to consider moving uh, new business item B, the trash fee? Do we want to, by chance, discuss it after we discuss budget, since it pertains to budget? Anybody else? I think it's fine where it is. Leave it where it is? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> If not any concerns or questions, can we have approval? Motion to approve. Motion to approve the agenda. Well seconded. Motion second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Public comments. I know I have one. Donna. She said she knows the three minute rule, so I'm not to read it. Okay, I have three good things. One is is that if you'll all speak into your microphone, I've got my phone there so I can hear everything you say, bad or good. The good thing is I, I want Jason to know how nice the pool is this year. It's wonderful. The lifeguards are fantastic. And the other thing is Max happens to be here. I, I complain about things I don't like, and I've told him what I don't like, what I do like. He knows me well now. But if you haven't seen the trolley and the airplane on the on the square just Change where the building. pocket park is, go see it. He's done a beautiful job. Thanks, Donna. Thanks, Donna. Anyone else? Public comments? You're all just waiting your turn for budget talks, it looks like. So moving on consent agenda any questions or concerns with the agenda consent agenda I do have a question concerning uh, item E the the resolution is this just what we decide as our there's no okay it's it's, it's uh, the C it's gotcha, separate. CDBG gotcha yeah. gotcha gotcha uh, the very last item. is this just what our activity is for the fair housing activity okay I didn't know if We've already said after this came out in 1988 that we're participating, or if we just have to re-up on that. Yeah, it's just our recent activity. Okay. We just had to pick one. We hadn't done it in a long time. Any other questions? If not, can we get a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Second. Motion second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? New business, convention and tourism fund disbursements. So the committee met. Um, we had quite a few applications this year. We have a full committee now, so it's it's great that we have some, you know, different ideas and opinions. Um, the recommendations are before you. Any questions? Sounds like we've got some great things going on in town. It might be pretty adventurous. So how does the revenue from our uh, guest tax compare with prior years? It's a little bit down this year. Um, there's not as many contractors in town or, you know, like the windmill, when the windmill people were here, it was really nice when they were How here. much would you guess it's down? Um, it's a small amount, maybe 5000 for the year, I'm guessing. It looks like it's picked up here lately. It is nice that we have a lot of Airbnbs in town because that kind of helps keeping them full. So. so they all pay the same tax? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Any questions or concerns? We have a motion to approve. If there's no questions. Make a motion to approve the disbursement of the transient guest tax funding as proposed by the committee. We have a second. I'll second. Motion and second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? 
sanitation rate adjustment. Uh, well, as you all directed last week, last week, last meeting, uh, it's uh, there in front of you. And then also I had sent you all a, a memo about uh, some other kind of funding sources that was wanted to know if that was something you all would like to discuss tonight as part of this. Does this take effect immediately? Yes. yes. And you all had a chance to review what Matt sent us? I don't think I saw what you sent. When did you send it? Uh, Friday. It's part of the report. I guess I must not have read far enough. It was an attached memo to the weekly memo that I sent to you. Okay. Well, yeah. why don't you review it for my yeah, benefit, Yeah, it was uh, uh, using $36, so uh, three times 12. Uh, so 36 bucks would be the increased cost for a, for an entire year for a household and so uh i i took that 36 bucks as, as a line of demarcation then applied that towards increasing the mill levy and the uh product of that is is what you all had in your uh okay. weekly report uh the and i had proposed uh or gave you three different scenarios uh one of them uh, being uh, increasing revenue, a, a total of 162,000, and 162,000 is five mills at our current current mill rate, and uh, applying that towards uh, this year's, I'm sorry, this year's uh, 2024's uh, budget, and that was scenario number one, and that would increase the mill levy uh, to 46.541, which is a basically about a 1.3 mill increase. And if you apply that per month cost uh, for 87.4 percent of the homes, uh, actually more than that, um, yeah. Let me go back. The 162,000. That's what we had spoke about at our meetings beforehand. And that to get 162,000 new revenue, that's where the 46.541 comes in. Uh, if you take that increase as a cost per month. Uh, for, I would say, nearly 100% of the homes in Iola, it's actually cheaper than it is to increase the increase the sewer rate by three bucks. Uh, for 87.4% of the homes, it's a equivalent increase of a dollar 88 a month. Uh, and the and uh, these numbers that I have, the 87.4%, those came from the 2020 census, using housing units of 2,788. Uh, so the uh, second scenario I gave you was 87.4% um, of the homes in Iola are either $150,000 appraised or below. Uh, the cost per month increasing the mill levy to 47.318 is three bucks. So it'd be the same as the increase you'd be looking at today. So 87.4% of the homes in Iola uh, are either are at 150,000 appraised or less, and they would actually be paying less per month than they would if you uh, approved a, a sewer rate increase. And then the third scenario was uh, trash rate, not sewer. Yeah, did I say sewer? Excuse me. Yeah, uh, sanitation, sanitation rate. And then uh, the the third scenario I gave you was 75.3 percent of the homes in Iola are at 100 are appraised at 100,000 or less. And that mill levy is 48.362. So what, what we wanted to put in front of you all was, uh, you know, increasing the mill levy, it, it sounds bad, but when you compare it to a cost per month the same, same way that the, the trash rate would be, uh, you know, increasing the sewer rate, it's, uh, it affects 2,432 residences only. It's only residential trash. The property tax affects everyone. Mm -hmm. It doesn't affect industries. Right. No. However, the increased sanitation rate affects non-homeowners as far as Rental. rentals. So it's not just on the taxpayer. But no commercial, no commercial nope. businesses. Yeah, there's it's no all commercial. strictly residential. Yeah, we, yeah, we don't pick up any trash for commercial or industrial. Right, I understand that. Or commercial. Right, I understand that. 
I, I do have a question. I think at the last month's meeting, we, it's currently $12, right? Yes. And this, this ordinance here would increase it to $15. And we were going to look at, at a claim that, that our current sanitation rate is less than the communities around us. Did we research? Did you research that at all? Do we know what the surrounding sorry, communities sorry, are, forgot, are charging? That's that's on me. I forgot to bring my information. <clears throat> Most of the cities, Chanute was fourteen dollars, and it's once a week. And um, I think Garnett was 16 or 17 and you're limited on how many um, trash cans or bags you can put out and then just around we were just really we were just way lower it was like 20 24 from what we found and I apologize I was going to bring that and I forgot okay I couldn't find another town yeah. <laughs> nobody does that but us <laughs> We are the only place that does that. Some of them do pick up trash one day and recycling, recycling the next. But those are Early usual. Day. Those day. are usually we professional or uh, private companies. I mean. I mean, our our folks are professionals too. They are. Okay. I mean, private companies, not professional, but yeah, private. So, if nothing else, this rate increase is due just as a market adjustment that we haven't done in a while, right? Like if like we haven't inflation. raised this. No, actually, no, this, no, the, the money going from the rate increase immediately is transferred to the general fund. True, yeah. but, but, but we're due for a rate increase for sanitation services. If nothing I, else. I'd say so, yeah. Just, just in comparison, what we're charging, because we, we could also make it zero and just increase the property taxes a lot and charge nothing for it. Or we could charge $50 a month and lower, I mean, we're just, yeah. Weighing it, and there's no good way to know other than let's see what everyone else is doing as a way to fix the service. A few cities that will do. Loan, loan a truck well, after a and big, storm, they big storms the, the yeah, mm -hmm. clean up after major curve, storms um, which is a big plus for a lot of people yeah so when we're talking about trash pickup i i like to make sure we emphasize those other right. services because other cities don't do that that's two of them not just one a weekend it's two a weekend yeah, and, the, and the the increase we'd be we'd be talking about it at at twelve bucks we we had a sixty five thousand dollar basically gap in the in the sanitation fund and it was either and we were transferring that to the general fund it was either pay for that in the sanitation fund or get rid of the transfer keep the sixty five thousand in the fund and and increase the mill levy the twelve bucks with with no increase I'm sorry twelve bucks with no transfer. Is actually a pretty good rate for us. It, it, the the fund will do okay. It will it will pay all the expenses, then put money back for dumpsters and uh, and, and trash trucks. Hmm. But yeah, the whole point of of increasing the the rate was to take that revenue and immediately transfer it to the general fund. So this is about eighty seven thousand. That eighty seven thousand won't won't go into the sanitation fund. It'll it'll be transferred to the to uh, to the general fund quarterly. Okay. Then my, my, my daughter lives North Haldex area. She pays fifteen a month, one day pick, one one week pickup. Well, your uh, staff recommendations gives three scenarios, but none of them are what I would prefer, which would be raise the sanitation rate from twelve to fifteen, and then cut the budget, so we have zero mill levy increase. Instead of having 162,000 in additional revenue, you'll end up with half of that, and then you'll have to cut 80,000 something. Well, we have it in there. It's called the baseline. the The baseline was not increasing the mill levy, <coughs> and and transferring the the 87,000 as you would have recommended last time. And no, we don't recommend doing that. But if you go that route, we'd be having this discussion again yeah. next year, correct? Yeah, uh, frankly, for me, a if, if the decision is to not do anything to the mill levy and increase this rate, increase it more than three. Because if we increase it three, we're going to be having the same discussion next year. Well, uh, we so could. to me, if you want to increase it three, uh, three bucks is two and a half mills. 
I mean, I was thinking, you guys want to do it, make it an even 20, make it an $8 increase. That is basically 6.678 mils, and we can see where we are in a year. 20 bucks per month for trash is still very cheap. I know a $8 increase on a $12 charge is a lot, but I, I think we, again, we'd be having the same discussion next year. We're having the same exact conversation if, if we just go with three. So our, the increase in our, our mill, uh, Carl, and that, that's one thing I missed, uh, our assessed valuation went up to uh, 34958 So the value of a, a mill is, uh, thir is 34959 And so that, keeping the mill levy the same, brings in an extra 116000 We didn't know that when we had this discussion two weeks ago, and we didn't know it. And when you were putting the bud budget together, that's why also in that memo I say we probably need to push this process back because it's much easier to have this discussion when we know what the actual value of a mill is. Uh, we, we can push the discussion back from staff, council side, uh, staff side, we can keep it the same. And then with the RNR, and we think that's going to be in place for the 2025 budget, who knows if it gets changed again. Uh, that pushes the budget approval back a month. So we, we can do that. Uh, one of those wishing we'd have we'd have done it now. The process had always been to get the budget done by August around here, and and so we, we just kept up with that. Uh, but Carl, if we do, if we increase it three, yeah, the 87 to the to the 116 is what, 239 or something like that. So it would be a, a decent increase to the uh, general fund for 2024, but 2025, that 87,000 isn't new revenue anymore. It's existing. So we'd be, again, we'd be back here having the same discussion. Well, it's clear that in the city of Iola, we've used our utility funds to <coughs> subsidize the general fund for many years. And I think that's helped keep the mill levy low. So if we just stuck with $3, um, so you're saying that next year you would propose another increase just to keep us flush or we could increase another utility fund that is lagging behind in terms of keeping up with inflation right uh the again we'll we'll see where we are um spending wise but i i think when we had this discussion last week last meeting and we told you all i think we we like this the expenditure model in the general fund where we are we're, we're putting money back for the fire department we're putting money back for streets and alleys and that hasn't always been the case and and then we've also paid for uh the 2021 salary adjustments that added over 300,000 to the fund and it wasn't paid for and then we've had what the gas fund did not transfer nearly 750,000 over two years because it there was enough money in that fund to do it so have we have we corrected that in the gas fund? Yes. So it's bringing in the revenue that we. It's bringing keep in the it. revenue to cover the transfer. Yeah. Yeah. To cover uh, the that transfer that six hundred thousand to the general fund uh, was eating the gas fund alive, and we we've covered that with the rate amendment we did last year. Uh, but we we're pretty solid with our expenditure model right now. We're just trying to pay for it. Uh, the you know that that two hundred fifty thousand for the. Uh, for the fire department, I mean, that's a good solid number to work with. Uh, I got Jason in the corner of my eye, 125 for his department, Street and Alley. And so when, when we had our discussions with them, we told them, is this a solid number to work with every year? And they said yes. So I, we let them know we're, we're not going to hover much from that. That's why we put all, that, uh, all those numbers into the general fund, and it spit out a number that no one wanted to see. And, and so that's why we came up with the, the recommendations that we did, in, increasing the electric fund by 200000 That's about as much as we can do in that fund. Um, and I think I let you all know in that memo, we're pretty tapped out with the utility funds and transfers. So if the moving forward for the 2025 budget, if there's going to be any recommendation to increase transfers to the general fund, uh, we are going to have corresponding utility rate increases to cover those expenses. It just we're we're just tapped out. Well, one more comment on the fire department. I mean, yes, over the last 15 years they have been. We haven't made transfers to their equipment reserve or any capital projects like other departments. 
but the fire department is the only one that really is able to get funding from grants. I mean, so maybe we only get one every 10 years, but that would be enough, just like we funded the fire truck. Um, so I don't see a big urge to put a whole lot of money to pay to pay the whole cost of a new truck. Okay, well, I, uh, unfor 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 unfortunately, we have a ladder truck that is needing to be replaced soon, and there's no guarantee that we can get the grant. So what do we do if we're sitting there with a the truck that we can't get a grant on, and it's, I don't know, what are they, a million plus, a million what five? For this kind of thing, so we have to. <laughs> And we need that ladder truck. I mean, it's it's proven itself. You got to put your money back just like you would if you're buying it at home. Yep. And then if you get a grant and save money. If you get a grant, great. You can utilize that money for something else later. But you can't plan on having that grant because the likelihood is pretty slim. Right. Council Matt did give us a lot of options, and I think he was very thorough in doing so. So I'd like the rest of you to pitch in it's this is an important topic to have and shouldn't rush it but he's 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 been very thorough in uh, what we can and can't do and let me jump in too we we don't have to make any decisions tonight i mean we can wait i put in the drop probably last meeting in july uh is, is when we'll need guidance on on what to put in the uh budget for publication uh, I, we'll, I don't mind waiting um I would just kind of like to have an idea of direction and yeah. what we're thinking before last minute again. Uh, to fa frankly, frankly, Kim, if you're going to go five, I'd say just go six, which is the equivalent of five mils. Tack on the extra buck. That's a fish. So, yeah. In it's terms still, yeah. of cost bearing load. If we raise the mills, that only impacts individuals who own property. Yes. Well, That's right. No. It would be passed on to renters also. Renters will be passed yeah, on by the landlord. I mean, right. But if it's a mill, but not trash. And if yeah. we did trash, it's anybody who has I only trash service. No, re Electric. Residential only. Not industrial. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's tied to your electric meter at a residence. Okay. Well, and I wouldn't say just industrial because it's more than that. It's commercial. It's, it's all the businesses commercial. on the it's square, a, yeah. Walmart. Those people don't pay that. Yeah, I don't have trash service. Right. But I have city utilities for right. my business. The apartment well, I'm complex comfortable with that making the proposed increase this year and then visit it again in another year. Raise it another three. Or, or, um, or just put in that step increase into the ordinance that it'll be raised three mills or three dollars this year and three dollars effective the first of January or the first of June. Historically, that's what I was always told, is the reason we don't do commercial is because we basically pick up with one truck and the county charges tipping fees to the commercial and the residents in town get it free. So that's why they allow us to bring out the residential trash free. Now that's what they've always told me historically. I don't know if th that's in writing anywhere, but it makes sense. It's in our, it's in our property. Right, and it's no different than if you take a load of trash out in your vehicle, personal vehicle versus the city dump or the, the city truck taking it out there. As long as it's residential, it's residential. Joel, you can make a statement. Yeah, <clears throat> um, I personally am against raising the, the mill levy if we can help it. Um, I understand costs go up, and it seems to me it would be better if let's say the cost of making water or hauling trash if we're behind on that it, it, it seems to me that we should raise those rates to cover our bills it makes a lot more sense to me than just running the mill levy up but 
the, the sanitation fund is paying for itself. Right. Like the whole, the whole point of this is to throw the money in the general fund. So this is really just a matter of how are we going to shift these costs? Are we going to have residential bear it? Or are we going to have, so it's, you know, so it's essentially do we just not want commercials to pay extra, an extra tax or fee, however you want to call it. Otherwise it's going to be borne entirely by residential. That's tr that's true. If our tax, if our trash rate is significantly less than the industry average, is aren't there some low-hanging fruit there for us to grab with without raising the mill? I just hate running the mill mill up. I would agree. I would rather see the uh, fund go up to the full twenty and then not raise the mill levy levy. Especially when compared to areas around us. I mean, I know Garnet does trash once a week, and how, how about this for a viewpoint? We, we can do both. It doesn't have to be one or the other, right? So we're raising the trash fee, or the sanitation fee, just to bring it up to par with what other communities charge. The fact that it's already paying for itself at a lower fee means that we just run it very efficiently, even with twice a week trash pickup. Um, it's running more efficiently than most other communities. What? <laughs> you got to stick with that. I'm going to stick with that. Um, and then, and then also raise the property tax for the other bit of it. And that way, you know, they're both sharing the cost of that. For some owner, just don't want a mill levy, no matter what. Uh, What's the it's the same thing. Whether you call it a tax or a fee, we're still raising the money yeah. through what you know. That was option two, wasn't it's, it? Raising, raising doing both. Mail, maybe. <laughs> okay. I just don't appreciate the difference tremendously other than how it's shifting the costs yeah. and who's paying it. Well, I'd be, before we have a formal vote, I'd be interested in seeing how many would propose, would support raising the, the, um, Residential solid waste from instead of three, have it at six dollars. Effective at the same time. Six. Yeah, from three to six. And that covers the five mills that were proposed. But we're still in that Robin Peter Robin Peter to pay Paul scenario. No, we're actually paying Paul this time. <laughs> we're paying Peter. Let me get that right. Yeah, this. <laughs> This increase would would cover the the transfer, so it's finally getting done correctly. It's just well, we do the six dollars. Do we have to revisit this all again next year? Are uh, we going to be in the same spot? Oh, I, I'm not going to say yes or no. My, my my assumption is I'll be talking to you all about needing some more revenue in the general fund next year. Anyway, I think well, if you guys want to split I, the difference, I think it would be great to shift it off for another year. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that, Carl? <laughs> uh, it, well, if you look at scenario one, the 46.541, that is an, an increase 87.4% of the homes in Iola. That's a buck 88 a month on, on property taxes. The actual dollar, $22.60. It, it's, it's not a shocking amount of money. Just ra you know, saying that raising the mill levy doesn't sound good, but for... <laughs> I mean, that's basically what my house is. I can afford an extra 23 bucks next year. Well, not everybody can, though, Matt. Fortunately, you can. But none of these scenarios have splitting the difference. All three scenarios say do not amend the right. this charge. So is there, can we have a scenario four where we increase to th increase $3, and what would we have to do the mill levy at? But the three dollars would then be an increase of thirty-six dollars a month versus the twenty-two. Right. I mean that's. A year. You mean a year? It's for year. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Did I say a month? Yeah. yeah but I again, mean a year. But again, to eighty-seven percent. I just had a thought. You know, we're we're trying to come up with some more revenue here. However, we do it. Um, promotion of our community. When I look at Iowa versus Chanute, we've got a lower 
meal rate and that's pretty nice in terms of selling the community if our trash rate is lower than everybody else's as well it still looks good so uh, I'll throw that out there They do all the cleanup week for the most part. And when it comes to trash service, that is one service that we've discussed where to cut. Well, let's cut trash to one day a week and don't do the fall, summer cleanup. Let's don't do the loan of truck. Then do we have to raise it? But that's not popular. You'll catch a lot of hell out there for, for cutting that service. So, you know, which way do we want it? We're the leaders. Do you want to give it to the people and raise the rates that helps the overall budget or cut the service? Yeah, it's tough. That's our only other option is to start cutting services if we're not going to raise rates. It's tough to cut tough a decisions. service once everyone gets accustomed to it. And I have to agree because I'll have six or seven trash bags a week rather than 2.5 or 3. As long as mine gets changed from a Monday, because that's always a holiday. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> well, well, darn it. Okay, this this would be my first choice. Uh, use the recommendation that uh, Matt has given us on the baseline, which is to maintain the current general fund levy at 45.231 and increase the sewer, uh, the Senate solid waste. Um, as proposed by three dollars so I would make that as a motion approve ordinance 3516 setting the new residential solid waste collection fee and authorize the necessary signatures you made a motion does anyone have a second and I'm sure there'll be discussion after the second if there's a second. Uh, I'll second Carl's motion. Motion and a second. Um, so that's uh, just raise the trash and not the mill mm -hmm. levy. Three, yes. Only three dollars. Correct. So. And oh, we're going to. Well, hold on a second. The, the motion would be to improve an ordinance that increases the solid waste uh, mm -hmm. fee. To me, the general fund discussion doesn't end. If you if, if we pass this ordinance and and that's what I want to make yeah. them aware of is that was going to be my discussion yeah. was this will not end the discussion for additional funds so or, be prepared to have an additional discussion about where the additional funds are going to come from or should this pass cuts. should this pass as the motion states because right now it the that three dollar increase it's it's eighty seven thousand bucks. So, you, so we'll, if this passes, we're going to transfer that entire amount to the general fund. We'll we'll throw that into our our budget sheets, and then we'll come back with potentially some other kind of general fund levy. Now we'll again, we'll we'll be fine for 2024, but again, I think in a year we're going to be having the similar discussion about the general fund levy. Okay. And that's what I, that's honestly what I would like to try to prevent is that it becomes a yearly discussion. So. I, so. Part of my discussion on this is that three dollars isn't enough if we're going the, the solid waste route. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, show of hands. Opposed. It's a split. I'm a no. Wait, wait, wait. Doesn't it have to pass by majority of the council? Because it's a general ordinance. So it, it fails without him voting. Well, but he votes on Well, I know, but it, it's going to fail regardless. Yeah. Okay, so those who voted against, would you rather see the rate go up more? No, not necessarily. I kind of wanted to table it and have some further discussion and 
a few more scenarios. I'd like to presented. see a blended scenario with a price increase as well as a mill levy increase and see what that does for the budget. Yeah. That's the reason why I voted no. Year, for sure. <laughs> Matt, when did you say that we could push this back till? Second meeting in July. So July 24th? Yep. That's, right. when yeah. we, that's when we vote on the final. So, Mayor, I will move to table this discussion. Uh, no? It's, it's, dead. it's dead. It's just dead? Okay. It's dead. Okay. We can bring it back. We'll come back with other scenarios. Sounds good to me. Is there right. something specific you'd like me to punch I'd into the calculator? Put it in as $6. Okay, it's under seventy-five thousand one hundred four. I already know that one. Yeah, that's the equivalent of five mils. I missed that. But it's under. Uh, yeah, C Carl had asked what a six-dollar increase was. One hundred seventy-five thousand one hundred four. One which is the uh, exact equivalent of five mils. I'm with you now. Yeah, that's what I'd suggest then. Put it in the six dollars. And I would also like to see splitting the difference. Okay. Splitting split the, the difference with the mill. With the three dollar increase, increase and, and two point five mil. Yeah. I think we're gonna have to do both. I think we're gonna have to increase the charge and I think we're gonna have to increase the mill levy. I'd rather not increase the mill levy at, to the extent without increasing the service charge. So I'd like to see what six uh, dollars looks like and then a mill levy attachment to that to get us through with the general fund. Yeah. Okay. You got enough from us, Matt? I do. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Water infrastructure. Uh, Mayor and Council, included in your packets a, a proposal from Sam, which is uh, who did our mapping and, or GIS improvements a few years back. Uh, when they did the conversion, the water didn't, it was basically all of it was converted off the old AutoCAD files. So the conversion didn't actually catch as well as what it should have with the water. So sometimes the main's on one side of the street and it's actually over on the other. Uh, so what we'd like to do is uh, have them come in and pull some points and they'll be able to reshift all that stuff better um, in, the, in the water side. The electric and the, and the gas, uh, and sewer seem to be good. Sewer is really good, actually, because we, uh, with the, with the, uh, the project that we had, it went in and did all the points on the sewer, so it pulled all those. How, how did they miss this when they originally oh, did they it? They didn't. They didn't money? miss it. They didn't miss it. They they converted the data just like they did the other files, but our AutoCAD files were just. It's it's not a smooth transition from AutoCAD to, to GIS. So they're, they're basically meets and bounds on our... Because it sounded like to me when you read their documentation, they, they go out and double check and they do some surveying and make sure that it's within line. They actually did G, uh, GPS all the manholes and the gas meters and gas valves. And we was going to do the water, but we never followed through with it. So if they absolutely had to use the CAD maps was their only source of uh, information. Okay. That's why it's... I mean, you couldn't fix it if you wanted to right now. All right. So we didn't really contract to do the water at the time. No. Well, we contracted conversion. to convert it. We just when you read what they did pool. for us, they exclude the water. So I wondered if they actually Is did it or not. We just never followed through with it. Have them come back okay. and, and that, pull points. Yeah, that, that makes sense then. And they're going to pull hydrants and valves at this point. The We're the not going to have them do any with. meters. But have they done this before for us? Oh yeah, with the sewer. Sewer and gas. Ice. Pardon? Is this a reasonable price? This thirty-three. It's probably pretty reasonable. I mean, second off, we've already we got all the the software already. We're using it for the uh, yeah. It's pretty much water, pro gas, proti electric. proprietary purchase with them hosting our website and hosting our our de data. It's going to be a lot easier for them to do it than hire somebody else and then have them incorporate it. How long will this take them? A couple months, maybe. It just yeah, depends on how fast they come in we'll here. We'll probably have to go around and find a lot of the valves for them and so forth like that. But we just give them our maps. And here's the deal. The longer we wait, the more outdated our CAD maps are getting out right. because Perfect. we haven't well, touched them for the last all, five, six years. All of Cedarbrook and all of that stuff that's been added yeah, needs so to be added on there. We're getting farther there. behind every year that we do not sure. do this. And so we do we have the use. funds in the, GI, in the uh, capital projects money. It's left over. We allocated a good portion for Christmas lights. We've got the, the balance to, 
to do the project. Cedar Brook, the yeah, new Cedar Brook will be part of this. And yeah. Oh yeah. We haven't have <clears throat> done any mapping to give like say they want to look at our maps again. They're so far out, outdated now that they're point almost pointless at the, at this point. So we about got you. We're going all in on this, or we're going to have to go back the old way. That's going to take a long catch-up period. A long catch-up. You're talking when you say old way back to the AutoCAD. Yes. Yeah. Well. But we got everything up to speed except for water, and honestly, we use the water maps more than we do anything. Right. We have more water main leaks than we do about anything. So that means if we go back to AutoCAD, then Corey has to do it all. I've still got my CAD files, and I will still keep them, <laughs> just because I uh, I like having the old historical data, but it's uh, not with the times. So, um, no, I think the price is a good price. I don't I don't have any doubt. It's you know, that's pretty labor intensive to come out and go all through town and pull points. I mean, as far as finding them, anyhow, our I mean, crew's going to be along with them. We'll probably, when we've done the gas, we met them like three to four times a day, and they'd give us a list of stuff they could not find, and we'd go find it, and they'd recircle back, and then the next day they'd give us another list. I mean, because, I mean, some of them are buried, some are in yards, and some are lost, and we got to hunt for them, you know. And that's just how it is. Well, I guess one way to look at it, if they're staying in town, we get some tourism tax and food tax back. <laughs> so Yeah, they'll have a crew here. There you go. <laughs> All right, Council, any further questions? I make a motion to accept the proposal from Survey and Mapping, LLC, to provide water and GIS mapping improvements for an amount not to exceed 33840 and approve staff to sign the necessary documents. I'll second. Motion second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. Thanks Thank for you. that info. All right. Budget presentation roundtable. Uh, looks like Mike is first up with electric generation. That's going to be page 46 and 47 in your uh, budget package you had at the last meeting. <clears throat> we pretty much flatlined the electric department ran our numbers straight across the only increase as you'll see <laughs> <laughs> we're not dead but no, uh, <laughs> no but we kept we, things flat we did we, not flatline yeah. we did increase sorry, the power sorry, purchase Mike, that just struck me. <clears throat> I was to, going to ask you about that why is that and jump numbers well actually one and a half million from who's 2023 budget and about a million from the 21 and 22. Uh, about oh, last year and a little bit seven. from October from the previous year to all last year, natural gas kind of took that big hit on us and it pretty much hammered our uh, if you power purchase the, fund. So we're going to increase the it. fund overview. Where's that? But actually, this year <laughs> things are stabilized out and normalized out, and we're setting. Yeah. About where we should be right here. Yeah, Mark. About this time last year, we we're paying. Were we in the six buck range? Yeah, for gas last more. year. Now, now we're we're what today it was two two, two and a quarter, yeah, and that's as high as I've yeah. seen it. So the the offset there, Mark, is in the revenue side on the electric. You'll see eleven yeah, eleven point five. So it yeah it offsets the expenditure offsets revenue. And honestly, it's yeah, kind I don't of know a, if they call it an ECA here. It's the yeah the, it's energy uh, cost energy adjustment. cost oh. adjustment, and and that goes the the cost of natural gas is is calculated into uh, the the bill. So you, you'll you'll see a bump in our expenses, but you're going to see a, an equal bump in revenue. And that, that you know, this time last year it was what six and a half bucks, seven bucks, something like that. And right now it's it's two. We're we're getting into the the expensive months now, and it was I think two and a quarter today, something like that. And yeah. it it's it's been under two bucks. That Wednesday. We're gonna spend some. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, the yeah. revenue will come in to offset it, yeah. So yeah, I just saw it that big jump of about one and a half mil from you know this year to next year. Yeah, well we have <clears throat> electric bills uh, for the city of seven hundred, six hundred and fifty, seven seven hundred and twenty thousand dollars. It goes through it pretty quick. So we just made that adjustment right there. 
<clears throat> other than that, everything else stays about the same other than the capital outlay uh, projects that I have <clears throat> placed on the next year's budget. The catalyst clean for the diesel units after the winter storm Yuri. We kind of put quite a few hours on them. It's looking like we're probably going to need to have them cleaned or they will probably pass the emission to 70% reduction. So and I, 2025 will be the year we have to retest them with the EPA. So looks like we we'll probably not have that done next year. Talking about uh, just the two word solos or all of them? No, so this will be just the diesel units. Uh, EMDs. EMDs and the new cats. Okay. I had the uh, Hortzillas done last year, so we should be good on them for a couple years. And we are trying to devise a way to have the Wurtzillas operational winter. One of them is going to be to add antifreeze to one system and make a bypass on the cooling towers on the other system. As you'll see, them numbers are in there. Which page are you looking at? 46. 46. Yeah, it's in Capital outlay, Carl. It's in that summary reserve detail. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> the other replacement would be the relay replacement. That's mostly on the ABB relay. They don't longer support the relays we got. We're just that outdated. So we started phasing them out and putting new ones in. This will be another phase of what we did this year for next year. And last and final would be to start black starting the last EMD at Bassett Unit 10. Any questions? The benefit of wintertime operation is uh, better rates since we're able to produce during peak and stuff I during the winter think months. Probably in the near future, way near sooner than I think, they're going to have us have two peaks, a summer and a winter. Right now, we presently only have a summer peak. We got to meet our uh, capacity needs. So they're going to probably have us to have a winter. So we have to have prove them in the winter too. And if we don't have them, it's two dollars and fifty cents times the ten. It'd be a quite a capacity payment we'll have to come up with so we need to figure out some way to get them things to generate electric in the winter so if you if you use antifreeze 34 3400 gallons mm -hmm. you said before that they would not run as efficiently but maybe that wouldn't make that much difference in the winter time well they're telling me that you know antifreeze actually does not cool as well as straight water but I'm thinking the offset in the summer of having the capacity in the winter, it's going to pay for itself in the long run if we do this. If we lose a few in the summer, we'll gain it back in the winter. So it's probably a win-win if we can figure this out for us. Good way to go. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bye. folks. Jimmy, we'll go back just a couple pages to page 43 for distribution. Well, I'd like to start mine off by saying that we're flatlined, but <laughs> <laughs> we, did, we didn't quite on that. Um, as you can see, like my materials and supplies, maintenance and distribution, I had to up with them a little bit, nothing real major, you know, one of them like, oh, 50,000 or so. And what the deal is, our material price, it's just went out of the skyrocket. Transformers about doubled. Poles is, uh, yeah, getting them is another thing. Uh, like transformer we was buying for $600 or almost $1,200 now. Uh, poles is up about 50% and was just buying partial loads and not having trouble now you either if you buy a partial load you spend enough money you might as well buy the whole load when they get done with shipping on me um, small equipment's pretty well stayed the same uh, vehicle maintenance um, that's just if you have like in our deal if we have trucks leaking oil or stuff like through hydraulics or something, we have to have certain kind of hoses. And if you have pump go out, it's the same thing. It's a material cost, it's a labor cost. Um, as far as the capital outlay, I did up the the uh, 
tree trimming program, about 25,000. And you guys saw that. I was here two weeks ago. How you go out for the bids and, and what the difference is of trying to get a tree crew to finish that up. It also don't mean that if if we're getting caught up on an area or something, we don't have to spend the whole amount. We could cut them off when we need to. But so far, <clears throat> your wet years, the trees go a lot more than your dry years. So hopefully not as bad this year. <laughs> they should should be should be dropping out pretty quick. Might be dead. <laughs> um, other than that, I just moved uh, money into equipment reserve because it uh, looked like we tried to replace a truck in 2026. You guys give me the authority to go on and try to get bids, but it would be two years out getting the truck. <laughs> no, but if I get the next one, uh, at least like electric windows. <laughs> I've still got the old hand cranks. <laughs> your bucket truck yeah. is slated for July the 24th. The bid opening is the bid week on. before, so the least last meeting in July, hopefully we'll have a bid back on the truck. Not all it'd be saying, a couple years down the road before, we before we'd get it, anyway, if we go with that. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. All right. I just closed my book. Toby is the next Toby. one up. And let me get the page number for you guys. Uh, Toby's going to do water production and water uh, wastewater treatment at the same time. We'll start with water. It's on 40 and 41. Okay, on the water side, I try to keep it pretty even. Uh, I raise my chemicals, and it's not so much the chemicals that's getting it, it's the delivery charge, the surcharge, the driver, I mean, they're adding more and more stuff for mainly just our liquid oxygen and CO2 and lime, I guess, but everything else from like we get from Hawkins out of Garnett, they've stayed the same price since we went with them in 2007. They've never raised their prices since that. They just kind of ride it. So it makes it nice. They're a good company to work. I have Jim just jinx that. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be calling you tomorrow. Yeah, call, yeah exactly. Exactly. Oh, we better, we better <laughs> review that. Yeah, I hope they don't, <laughs> hope they don't watch the meeting. Yeah. Um, Toby, <laughs> on capital outlay, um, put money back to inspect and repair our chlorine scrubber. It's been in service since 2005, and it's it's one of the things you don't use unless you have a chlorine leak. So I hope we never use it, but I'd like to make sure that if we did have to use it, that it worked properly and everything. I mean, we run to open the valves and try it and everything. It seems to work fine, but it's probably after that amount of time, somebody should come down at least give it an inspection. I don't know if it'll be any repair or not. I'm just put them together as the same thing. Capital outlay, you got 40,000 infrastructure and 135 with the Yeah, the, the college, college tower, yeah, we're still putting money back for the college. We're going to do the college first and then do the Gates Tower after that. It's on the, yeah, it's right here Oak somewhere. Street is in there. Oak Street is on the Water Tower Maintenance Program. It's in It'd the line under item under contractual tool. services. Yeah, Mark, we've incorporated that as a line item. And yeah. that will change, hopefully, after each year, we'll add each water tower after we get it if we can get all three, that helps. If we can get all three of them on there, then you'll know, I mean. Because they'll catch problems before we get into it too deep. Right. They come inspect it every year. If they be fixing, they fix it. I mean, it's, and you're, you're basically paying for. <laughs> Instead of having to come up with 250000 at one big whack, it goes towards, I mean, they take the L. I think it would be a good thing for the city in the long run. Since we have three towers, we just will take care of them so they don't get in the shape they are now. Yeah, I don't just climb them, though. <laughs> that was for the call. Where at now? On page 40. That's that's, that's the, the same tower. thing. That's a that's just a summary of this, Mark. Okay. Yeah, that's just the I've got paint the chlorine scrubber for or uh, inspect the chlorine scrubber for twenty and right. uh, the college tower for one hundred thirty-seven five. And that's 
there's not much in there for water, really. The only other two things are those two that you had, we have highlighted in there, guys. Remember, those are the ones we mentioned that, that you know, are things that need to be done that the rate structure, hopefully after we get the bond payment paid off in two years, that helps fund those those other projects. Is why yeah. I had those highlighted because uh, they don't go away. They just, spend that money. Yeah, they don't go away. They just get moved until we hopefully get the loan payment paid off, and then we'll have money to make some of these big ticket items and get everything back on where we need to be. What so did you have on here for your sludge lagoon cleanout? Is yes. that one or both? It's just the one. The one catches everything. The one to the north. Okay. It comes out of that, then basically what comes over to the other side, it's really clear. I mean, basically it's a main settling pond. But if we let it go too far, it'll probably start filtering. So over. you don't have the sludge build up in the south one? Mm -mm. No, it's all in the one straight north. And this amount, and that, this amount that you project in there, that's just a guesstimate since we don't really have a idea? I called the people that, I got a call the company that does it and they said, how big is it? How much sludge do you think is in it? I mean, they just gave me a ballpark because if we can apply it land, apply it instead of hauling it to this the landfill or something, that probably makes it in half or something. I imagine, but I don't. That's just a number I threw out there for now, just for until we find out exactly what they're wanting to do. Keep in mind, both those yellow numbers, guys. We're not allocating any dollars for it. That's just yeah that's for you just, guys to know. In two years, we're going to have that. Yeah, for, yeah, the yeah, 2026 is a year for those projects, and we won't have a bond payment then. So that's what 600. And we've been it's saying 686,000 uh, for that year. We've already spent you know 460 of that that 686. Those would be one-time projects. What about the Joyce's and the uh, Oak Street? Did they get repaired yet? No, oh, I got hold of him last week, and he said he was supposed to let me know, and he never did. I need to check on that again. I mean, there's, they haven't been done, but they're still on, on schedule. But I haven't heard when they're gonna when they're gonna be here. And he was supposed to call me back, and he didn't. So I'll I'll check again tomorrow. Yeah, we signed the, we signed and sent him the scope of work. Right, back. he's got. Yeah, we've already sent the scope of work and signed it and everything else. So we're just waiting on them now. Good deal. Okay. Uh, we'll keep Toby up here, and we'll switch over to the wastewater treatment side at 52 and 53. Oh, sorry. Then we'll jump back for Mitch. Okay. As far as the weight, that side of it goes, there's, I went, I mean, there's hardly any changes at all. I did put some money in capital outlay to replace a mower, or tractor mower, so we'll have... The one we have now is six years old, seven years old. So by the time we do it, we'll have a, it's still pretty good enough shape you can use it as a backup. I mean, it still works, but the other ones we got are, I mean, we got it blows fuses. We had to take, I mean, it, it's time to upgrade for the, because it seems like every year when we get hot and heavy on the mowing, it, one of them breaks down. And so if we had a couple that want to be a backup and then we also use it out there if we do, like Mike uses it once in a while, snow removal, we use it for stuff like that. So, and other than that, that's the wastewater. There's not much on there right now. Questions? Do what? Hmm? Oh. The back truck. Oh, no, that's, that's on Mitch's side. That's, that's Mitch. Side. Uh -oh. yeah. No, I don't get anything cool like that. I just, <laughs> he gets all the neat stuff. Yeah. You got solar bees, Toby. Yeah, I got solar bees. You, you can borrow it and back that sludge out. Yeah. <laughs> I know. See how it yeah. works. <laughs> then give it back to him. <laughs> Your solar bees are still on a maintenance agreement? Mm-hmm. Is that working out okay? Works out real good. Yeah, it's, it's on there. I think it was 30 something. Solar B. Proposed see. for 38,000. Yeah. Yeah, they, they do a good job with them, I guess. They keep them running. Like I said, when we did the upgrade, we did all the piping and stopped the short circuit, and we had the aeration basin, and then we did the solar bees, and that made everything work. So I'd hate to take out part of the equation and be out of compliance because. 
I think that's, I think they help. I'd so what are you hearing from the state right now as far as the next? Ammonia removal. Ammonia removal. Ammonia removal in 2028. Eight. Are so. you saving money for all that? Do. <laughs> no. No. Yet. Yeah, and six million bucks. It's uh, well. Well, I should let me backtrack. We're not entirely sure what it is we need to be doing yet, so right. that's what we've paid for the study to do. I, I I've let you all know there's like five or six steps we have to take between now and 2028. We are ahead of the game. We're on step three now. Hey, one of the steps was think about having a plan done, and then another one was signing a contract to have a plan done, and the third one is actually having a plan done. Uh, so we're, I think we're in step three now, so we're ahead of the game year-wise. But I, think I, I told you all, uh, I cut through all of the biology that goes into the ammonia, and, it, and I'm oversimplifying this, but uh, it basically boils down to we need more air in, in our effluent. It needs to be aerated. And we're looking at putting some sort of building to provide more air. And we had ballparked the cost at about six million bucks. And we're 2028 when that needs to be done. Yeah. Um, so we'll be talking about that eventually. Uh, I don't, we can't put any money back now because the, we're managing that fund until 2025. And then when 2026 comes. This is uh, coming out of wastewater though. Excuse me? This is wastewater. I'm getting my. Yeah, oh, it's mixed it, up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, wastewater's in good shape now. Excuse me, wastewater's in good shape now, but uh, we can't be putting back enough money to cover six million bucks. That would probably have to be just look at taking out a loan through the uh, RLF and then increasing the rate at that time. Uh, but we figured we'll worry about 2028 in 2026. Got a few years to worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go. And I wish, yeah, we're, in, <laughs> we're, yeah, this is going for everybody. Uh, so the, I mean, cities uh, across the state are are talking about 2028, talking about it now, and all the the uh, new money standards we have to meet. We're fortunate we're farther ahead than most cities, just because yeah. we we went with Burns and Mac and had that study done a couple of years back. So we're fortunate in that aspect. If yeah. we can do something to keep us away from a mechanical plant, oh, we would be way far ahead because that gets, I mean, it's like building a new water plant. It's probably $15 million. I mean, I yeah, don't, we were looking at it. One was $25 million. I can't yeah, remember. It was, it was, yeah, million. so we don't. Yeah. Also, don't you have to staff that? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now yeah. I go there every day and Pulls check it out. And, and, and I mean, for, yeah, for the most part, I mean, it's Lagoon. It just sits there as long as there's. But once you build that plant. Oh, you'll have to have it staffed, yeah. So then you got to figure that. Personnel. Yeah. Because we, we're all class two wastewater operators, but we've never operated a wastewater plant in our lives. So no, we'd have to be alert. Heard was that it has to be staffed seven days a week. It's almost as stringent, if not do. more, than a water plant. I mean, because you're putting things back into back the river and stuff. Yeah. Than a, so, yeah, we can do away with. Not a daily test or an hourly test or something. Well, I'm sure it happened. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, it'd be a lot more advanced than what we are now. So if we could make our lagoons work and add a little ammonia removal at the end of it, then that would definitely be. And we have that covered cell there now that we use, so we may be able to incorporate the air into. I don't know since it's already there. The basin's already dug. It's been there for since they built the lagoon. So it may be something we could tie into this and not have to go for the structure and all that, just put a building on top of it. And like I said, I don't know, we're just drawing straws right now. We have the Burns and Max looking at it. So coming up with different we're ways. Corresponding with KDHE on most of it. So I mean, we're, oh, yeah. we see a lot of correspondence that we're not involved in the middle of. Yep, okay. KDHE, my, my buddies. <laughs> no, it's a lot of them by him, yeah. But better than your enemy, too. Yeah, exactly. I keep on the good side, that's for sure. Thank yeah. you, Toby. All right, thanks. Thank thanks. Okay, Mitch is up next with the water distribution side. We'll switch, we'll uh, flip back to page 37, and that gets you to the distribution side for Mitch. Let's take a water report. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, folks, I'm about like everybody else. We made some few adjustments, and mainly was on uh, <clears throat> our vehicle maintenance. We raised it a little bit, and we have been putting some money back for vehicles planned on them. But I've got a spreadsheet that shows all the vehicles. It's kind of like a timeline that we talked about replacing them. But I we slide them back. I've slid them back quite a little bit, and. Uh, I think that I guess I feel like what we need will come ask for it, but until then, we're going to keep what we got. And second off, I think maybe we got better equipment than what they're selling us nowadays because if you buy something new with deaf and stuff like that, it ends up back under getting worked on all the time. So we're going to get the good out of what we got. But we have been putting money back in the water fund for <clears throat> a new service truck and a dump truck. And other than that, it's just we up the uh, vehicle maintenance a little bit because we plan on keeping them just a couple of years longer. Uh, other than that, it, there ain't a lot changing here. And uh, gas. Um, I think we talked about it, but I don't see nothing. I think we're going to tackle it next year, the lead copper rule. And I was, I was going to bring it up a little bit tonight. I'd like to purchase a small pot holder this year. It's going to be unbudgeted. And if we can have the money set back in our reserves, we're going to probably try to buy that this year. We've talked amongst ourselves. And we'll come forward to you folks. But I think it'd be money ahead to get it while we can get it. Is this for the requirement the state's going to have? Pardon? Is this for that requirement that the state's making yes. for and sewers? Yes, I got a feeling everybody in the United States is going to want a pothole. Are we saving money for that project? This this lining? Once again, we really don't know what they want because they ain't going to tell us until 2024 of next year. So you're really kind of, you're reading into That's a lot of smoke. Expensive. Right. Well, we don't know if, what the requirement's going to be. If they're going to require us to do yard lines or just our services from the meter to the main, we, we really don't know. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, that one we, that one we wish we could tell you, but we can. And basically it boils down to what Corey said, are, are we hopping onto the private side of that line or not? Uh, private side of the line is going to cost us the, the, the main, it'll probably cost us, but it's not going to be as extensive. We're, uh, yeah, there's Mitch, much shorter. Twenty twenty four. We're it's supposed to get more guidance. Side to the house so we got to have our pay for it? information yes. all put to, submitted to them by twenty twenty four. Then they're going to come back and tell us that ultimately they're going to tell you get rid of all of it. First lead, then they're going to go to copper. So we might as well just get ready for. It. I mean, they ain't just going to take a list and go good enough, gang. <laughs> they're going to tell you start yanking it. So if it's on the private side, the homeowner will have to pay the cost. Well, we don't see, know. That's the iffy thing. No, we don't know. I don't. I believe well, the that makes EPA sense. or the basically the federal government is saying don't worry about it. That's a private. But the way I understood it, the state of Kansas saying no, we want it all yeah, out of our Kansas state. state. So if they do that, we might have to somehow figure out a way to support that fund too. Yeah. But I do think we need to get the pothole or bot <laughs> and have one before everybody and their brother wants one. And I, I found Mitch's, I've got Mitch's, uh, his purchase schedule for equipment is actually page 35. It's behind the gas fund uh, because his all his three departments are actually put on one spreadsheet. So as he's talking about that, that gives the, the guideline out of his that pretty colored chart he's got in there. I say we moved something forward already this year in the 2023 purchase. But... Okay, so if you don't have any questions on the, on the water side, wastewater for Mitch is page 50 and 51. Any questions on the water? Carl? Well, <laughs> yeah. When are you going to replace, when are you going to replace all the service lines on Madison? Right now we're doing one at a time. You seen this? <laughs> yes, I'd like to know if that's. Uh, uh, we I talked briefly about that. I think we're going to have a meeting with yeah. Burn, with our engineer. Because it's not just next week. There. The week after the holiday, uh, we're going to have actually have an infrastructure meeting as far as our utilities as well as Bell Telephone, Cox, all yes, of our franchisees. We're going to meet with them. Uh, somewhat of a pre-con but it's very early it's more of a utility relocate meeting if necessary typically all of those utilities are worked on before a street project right. and if you don't then you're going to be digging up your street or we street. roll it up into the street project well, it's just more services i mean uh, last half of that is like the original main right. that was put in here when the iola was established so that's got to go i mean 
So how many service lines are we talking? Every one of them we went down through there. 50? Was tied over like that. Mm. The square I mean, the it starts of at them. basically Madison, and we went clean to First Street right. doing that. So, I mean, I don't know off the top of my head, but there's a slug of them in there, Carl. Well, it seems like Eric's been replacing or working on a lot of them because of the leaks. Yeah, we've got a handful of them, 12 out of 70. <laughs> we'll just keep chipping away at it. Does that answer your question, Carl? <laughs> Thank you. You're, Thank you're you. welcome. <laughs> <clears throat> Any more questions on water? Sorry. Here's on page 50, guys, or wastewater collection. Say again. Uh, wastewater is on page 50 and 51 for collection on Mitch's side. Pretty much we're putting money back and equipment reserves to replace uh, Unit 27, which is the VAC truck. And uh, it's scheduled for 2025. Hopefully, ours can make it that long. It's needing some needs some work. We're just kind of babying it along right now. I mean, I don't want to sink a lot of money into it if we're going to hopefully get rid of it in the year 2025. And I don't plan on buying one quite that big when we replace it. I mean, uh, things have just evolved where you can get a smaller truck and be just as effective as that thing. I mean, you can't fit it down half the alley, so I mean, you might as well need a caboose behind it. It's so big. I'm not real sure why Jim bought that. I wanted to spec that big a truck out when he did Other than it. that, we've been, <clears throat> we put a little more money back, I think, in quitting reserves for the trucks and vehicles, but we kept it pretty, pretty straight even right here, too, in this uh, department also. You know what the wait time is on your order one? Like well, I can tell you what they'll tell you, but what they really follow through with, we might have until 2027 after we bought it in 2025, because we're still waiting on pickups that we bought last year in September, and got told maybe December. So, you know, I, I, they're telling us they can get them rather quick, because the, the supply on the bigger trucks ain't like the supply on the smaller trucks, but, you know, they're salesmen. Yeah, and then we'll worry about that. A little bit kind of like showing up to a restaurant, you know, you get there and it's not busy and then all your friends and relatives show up and yeah, you're waiting for everybody else anyway. So how are the lift stations doing? Uh, we're going to start a, uh, kind of like the same thing they're doing on the water towers for the West Interceptor. The others we're planning on phasing out, like I think we'll probably start a, we're gonna do another one this year. We're gonna be back in here. We got approved back in September of last year, but I'll have the sealed bids back this year for the one on top so of the So you're gonna have a, a maintenance agreement and have a- On the West Interceptor. Just on the West Interceptor? Yes, because all the others are gonna be new enough I'm not worried about, but the West Interceptor is gonna be right at 30 years old, and it'd take a chunk of change to replace that one. So I wanna get in on a, uh, just a rotation where they come and kind of inspect it with us once a year and you know just kind of prevent us from having to re completely redo that one because it'd be like redoing the main plant all over again it is like the main plant all over again okay thank you but i believe it'll probably be the following year before we tackle another lift station unless something miraculously happens here So I didn't ask this when you were talking about gas, but do you have, are you uh, using a contractor now for your, your agent, whatever that smelly stuff is? Yes, we have somebody yeah. come and do that, add that for us now. Okay. Yeah, we, we've been doing that for quite a while. He was, I think he was there when we started doing that. Yeah, it's we've done it for quite a while. Quite a while. Speaking of gas, if you don't have any more questions on the wastewater, it was the next one slated. Uh, Pages 30 through 34 are, is uh, the gas utility. About the only thing we're doing there is putting a little money back for projected equipment. And like once again, we're going to try getting the most we can out of it. And we've added just a little bit in the line items just because everything costs so much more. I mean, it's the same thing as everybody else has been telling you. So 
That what? Gas purchase production is sure expensive. Yeah, they uh, they don't cut you a big break every month for being. Uh, or welding for gas lines that uh, device you're using is that still working fine? Are you talking for poly or like our welder? Poly. Yes, the electrofusion. Yes. Yeah, so that's the way to go. It's just speeds everything up because now you got to track every fitting, every every stick up, roll of pipe, every fitting. I mean, you got to track where it is, where it got put in, the barcode and everything like that for uh, the KCC. That way, if there is a recall or failure, they can come in and go, I want to see this lot number. Where'd you put it? So you can dig it up and fix it. Well, now we bought another one since we bought our first one. It tracks that, monitors, puts it on GPS, and it, it saves it all for us. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. I think that finishes Mitch up. Uh, next is, uh, or the last one is recreation. Hey, wait. I want to take your picture. <laughs> hey, Jason, before you start, can I ask you what's wrong with the slides? I saw a thing in the paper. So, uh, to be politically correct, um, a child threw a towel in the slide pit and it got sucked down into the pump. Okay, I just wondered what, it's what was the situation. It's operational this morning. So they're still out? You can't no. use the, no. you, yeah, it? No, it's go. operational yeah, this morning. It's, it's Mitch's it's guys went down and helped Jason back it out. Got the towel morning. out? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I You're just wondered. I just didn't want to. Uh, Jason had called me Friday evening, and, and I didn't want to call out a crew over the weekend to to go down there and tear it apart. What's wrong? I just right. No, it's back up and running. It was a long Friday night. <laughs> um, so basically, on the revenue side, it is straight across from 23 to 24. Um, I know it looks like it's uh, $35,000, but we don't hold league meet next year, and we got a $40,000 transfer from the. Uh, wastewater fund um, some of them dip down some of them go up on the revenue side but pretty much we're straight across sponsorships have been good um, uh, swimming the pool's been pretty busy for the first month so hopefully that keeps up appreciate you guys for doing the uh, sponsoring free swim day. Um, very much appreciate you. Are most of the days filled now okay You guys have any questions about the revenue side? I do. Okay. I'll share with you. I go swimming every day, so I look at everything. And that building is as old as I am. And it really needs some patching. And, and that paint? clock that has never worked for probably 30 years, why don't we take it down and get one that works? I know how expensive that one would cost to fix. I've heard that before, but just take it down. But we have one window missing. Hey, Donna, as you another go fundraiser in. for you. Donna, you want to speak into the microphone? Oh, I'm, I'm talking to him. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll go back. We Donna, need to what patch. clocks are you talking we about? We need to patch a bunch of things. You could do a fundraiser for that clock. <laughs> I, I want the clock down, but in order to fix that clock, it's such a unusual clock. I heard about 10 years ago what it was going to cost, and I said, just take the darn thing down. Now, one year, I forget which year, but they put another clock up, but it didn't stay very long. And so I, I think clocks are kind of nice to know because we swim from, old people swim from uh, 12 to 1. And so it's kind of nice to know what time it is. I kind of watch the lifeguards and I think, okay, that's a half hour. But uh, the building needs to be looked at and we painted it, we being CITF, paint, ha paid for the paint and the city painted that, I can't remember how many years ago. Blue, though. It was just the, yes. that was just the top. Yeah. It was in 2012. Uh, 2012. Like a and, and it really paint. needs some help. Like and a restoration project? You no, no, no. 
I just think says yes. we need to patch it. <laughs> patch it or something. I don't know. It, if you go in there, you Josh see a whole lot of things. There. And I mean, there's the bottom a line, guys, is it's a 1930s WPA yeah. building. Yeah, that it's as old as I am. I need patched all the time. <laughs> Thank you. And I still love the pool. The clock Don is talking about, she's right, probably about 10 years ago is going to cost $2,000 to fix the clock. So I don't know what it'd be nowadays. But um, it doesn't work. Nope. It's tied it's into the concession one. stand. It has a motor on it. And we're going to have to pay somebody from Indiana to come down and fix it. And we can get an outdoor clock and just hang it up there like she had seen in the just past. Just go to Walmart so. and buy it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Max can fix Max it. Max can fix the clock. It's <laughs> worth it. So you think the building needs mortar work? Mortar? Some t TIC. Tuck pointing. Yep. Um, we've talked about it during the budget. Um, but to I've be, had able, that all done to be able to afford that, we're going to have to find an alternate way to fund the recreation department. That black? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and can't just live off transfers because we never know if we're going to get them. And as you guys were discussing about raising rates for wastewater or this trash pickup, I mean, we live off us. Of transfers as you can see so um, if we're not getting them then we pinch pennies so yeah look at it <laughs> yep it needs some TLC so um, well you you are funded by transfers but your department is provides those amenities that everyone looks for in a community that you can't get rid of yes well, they're good to have. Um, we'll skip to the last page for now for our operation budget, page 62. Um, it pretty much flatlines. Uh, we try to we try to do our best to. Uh, you guys and your terminology. <laughs> it stays flat. How about that? There you go. It didn't die yet. Um, but it's flat. Uh, we try to make everything work. Um, we may rob Peter to pay Paul and some of our, if we go over the line, but it's not a big deal at the end of the day as long as um, With our capital outlay, um, one of the things that isn't on here, but I hope we can find a way to fund it this year is the soccer field. Well, um, I didn't care yes. any of that. So Bad. To, to aerate it and reseed it, it's $10 for 1,000 square feet. It's got divots, huge ones. And the more rain, the more erosion it gets around the grass, and so. That one, huh? I tried, um, but. I'd rather play with snakes on a flat ground than. So there's no money in the budget for that. You're asking extra. Is that? The we'll system? see what's le like. This would be an October project. Um, it's 180,000 square feet. Um, but I've also talked to the guy who had came out and looked at it, and he said we can just do the fields by themselves and not worry about the parts outside the lines. Um, it just it needs some TLC. Uh, <laughs> he, me and Ryan aerated it. We got it from Pargman. I don't know, maybe 2014 or 15, and then it looked really good, and we didn't get any precipitation. Hard. So, um, guys from over in Fredonia, uh, he takes care of a lot of football fields. Uh, he all shot us an offer for ten or ten dollars for every thousand square feet. Aerate it. He said you can buy the seed. We put it in the machine. We'll seed it and we'll aerate the whole thing for you, and then we'll give you a watering schedule so you guys can go out there and move your rain train. So that's how we've done it before. I mean, it's it's work, but I mean, it's better than what we have. So There's just no water underneath. You'd have to use sprinklers, right? You got to go and pull them every hour. 
So you put it on your phone, an alarm, and you go out there every hour and you pull the hose. I found an error on our spreadsheets, Matt, just so you know. For whatever reason, we didn't, we have in his capital outlay and equipment reserve, we've got 12,000 at the top on the, on the front page um, that we didn't carry over. Actually, there's 24,000. I'm not real sure how that, I need to look at this page. We're going to have some things to work out on that fund. I can tell you by just looking at that and the carryover. Um, we'll fix that before we bring it back. This, I mean, we did have, I mean, according to this front sheet, we've got, we threw $30,000 for pool. We're trying to put back 30000 for pool facility improvements, which would fix. Does that include the building? Well, that's, because I mean, that's a little bit of everything. That? That's a little bit of everything. Flex seal on, it's going to do the trick. And then, <laughs> I mean, we're going to have to trim some of this back because it's not going to work. I can just tell you by throwing it in there. But we, yeah. Well, I, I think me. we've established that our recreation department is underfunded. And increasing fees, one way to get more money is not a popular thing to do. And I, I think our pool fees need to go up. Um, but, yeah, it's, this stuff has been deferred. And, and we've never had any money to do anything. And we don't have any money to do a lot of it now. Uh, so I think, Steve, the, that committee you would put together, I mean, we can talk about improvements till the cows come home, but how are these things going to get paid for? So that's a discussion that, uh, that's a larger discussion that needs to be had, and how consistently is that going to be done? Is that is that a sales tax? Is that some kind of dedicated revenue source? We we don't know what that is, but I, I think we've established here that a lot of stuff needs to be done, and it's going to cost a lot of money, and we just don't have it right now. So we can't save any money towards building. Uh, it would be very little. Number, I threw those numbers in on that front page, and it throws us in the red. Yeah, by so, about fifty thousand. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So we have it just deteriorates like that. We do have a committee that you've developed for that, right? Yes, and that's because part of the discussion is to right. find and out what other communities are doing and, and funding and funding right and, and try to market brand. ourselves so Market. that we can bring in those other tournaments and things like that. So we would exactly cause the revenue. Right. Okay. I mean, I know I've told the. Administration, I'd love to see a sales tax, especially if we're going to have 200,000 people coming to our state park. Let everybody else help pay for it. Make some, cha some changes to our facilities and improve them, yes, but they're also 1938, and um, they've seen some better days. What's your projected purchase on the pool? You've got 30,000 set back for a total of 90 for pool facility improvements. So, like it need, we need also need a new roof on the pool, but I haven't gave that to Corey yet. Um, but to have the outside painted, like to have our building painted, it was projected at $55,000. Um, so I'm guessing half that. And then, you need to get the water and stuff fixed before you paint it. right? Well, that would be included in it, right? That'd be included in it. It's the overall maintenance. So, and then the slide outlets where the kids come out, like it's probably needs inspected, and then um, some of it maybe need to be replaced. And Schnute's new pool, I know they had theirs replaced, and it was thirty thousand. Things uh, aquatics is uh, very expensive. Like, for instance, one of the shade structures ten alone is eight grand. What is the admission? Two dollars? Yeah. Well, the surrounding area is charged for admission. Um, I told Matt I was going to do a study like I did when you were here, and I haven't done it, but oh, Humboldt's too. Two's a good general rule that Chinook. that that everyone does. Higher, but they have they have the lazy river. Yeah. Their facilities. I think are our biggest loss is not the two dollars for adults. It's more of the the under. It, it, it's the, free. Yeah. Right, well, the whatever age group gets in the, free. The daycares bring their. Yeah. Well, what, what age group gets in free? What? What age group gets in free? Five and under and sixty-five and older. Yeah. Uh, the the five and under is uh, definitely being used by kids that are five and under uh, being used uh, the, the times I've been there I've, I've seen child care centers come right in 
Is that and typical in Humboldt and Chanute? Some right? places, some places are three and under. I mean, topic for discussion, that's for sure. Um, Absolutely. Uh, I want to say it was 2014. Last time I went out, I went to eight different pools, and I had a whole series of questions for them to fill out, and it gave how much they charged, how much they paid their employees, had adult swim, if they had adult swim, how often they cleaned their pool. Um, some places don't clean their pool every Jason, I'd like to challenge you to maybe recreate what you did in 2014 so that we can um, visit this in January, started in January or so. and I can do that. Yeah. Um, it's a good road trip, and I can take my assistant, and that way he can kind of see the what the pool like. It's definitely something I don't want to lose. It's been pretty steady. Um, the free days do help, uh, but overall, I mean, they cares. They come almost every day. Uh, but overall, I mean, compared to the numbers last year, we. Offer a package or something like that. Do yeah. do we still offer that or no? pass. Yeah. Yeah, we also we also discount like when you guys. Uh, pay to have free swim days we discount that do people take advantage of the season pass do you feel like uh, we might have 15 to 20 so no because just need they, to reevaluate they the also know that thing. they're getting 20 to 30 free swim days so there's no use in getting a family pass yeah, when that's true I can take advantage of the free swim days Greatly appreciated because then the, the kids that can't barely skate by, they can actually take their two dollars and go to the concession stands and get exactly. something. Yeah. So. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. I'd appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, you, Jason. for council and administrator reports. So we'll start with you, Nick. I ain't got nothing. Nothing to do. It's too hot. There you go. Carl. Uh, Matt, have you heard anything on the uh, grant you were applying for on electric charging stations? I uh, have not heard anything back. Uh, so it's still up in the air. Uh, the number of applications came in uh, a lot more than Charge Up Kansas anticipated, and so they they pushed their timeline back and then didn't really give one. So we haven't been told uh, yay or nay on it. And again, we, we apply for the ability to apply for a grant is what we did. So we submitted a project concept form and just haven't been told. The email I got said we, we got your application and we got a lot of them and so we'll let you know when we let you know. Yes, that's one thing I'd like to see back on the agenda is reconsideration of our electric charging stations. Anything else? Nick? I would like to talk about dog poo. I, I realize that probably came out wrong. I don't, I don't really want to talk about it, but I, I feel compelled to, which also doesn't come out right. Um, I just have a, a constituent reached out and had some issues with uh, folks letting their dogs do their, their business and then not picking up after them. So I just want to remind our fine citizens that, you know, you can let your dog do whatever you want on your own property, but on public property and, and other people's private property, it's uh, it's it's required that you pick up is there a reason pet. we couldn't put some dog poopy contain bags at the opening of the cemetery around the cemetery because i had to take care of a call a couple weekends ago and we had to call an employee in to clean up some poop at the cemetery and i'm wondering if we could have tra bags for that 
Berkeley and I actually spoke about that. He's got signs up at the cemetery, yeah, I saw it and too. he's got, I think, some extra bag dispensers. I think he was going to put one have up a at the kiosk. With some bags on it or something. But, but, they probably have to put it at the kiosk. And, and while I agree with that, it's a good idea. It's a good way to encourage the behavior you want. But also, it's it's not our responsibility. I no, mean, but I'm just saying need to be responsible they're for not their picking it up. And so, yeah. I mean. And if the police saw somebody's walking their dog, they need to say that's not allowed. I think I think it's kind of like the grass clipping situation. We just need to remind our residents of yeah. our ordinances, and then we need to put our money with our mouth and enforce the Force. ordinance. Can we not have the mouth references with the dog food? <laughs> I mean, just sorry. Okay. You <laughs> started it, Nick. I'm sorry. But I was also the recipient with Kim yeah. two weekends ago with a graphic picture and yeah. a very long text message while I was out of town. So I, yes, it is not our responsibility, but we kind of need to offer that. And if we have the extra little stations, one at each entrance of the cemetery. I had to go to the cemetery today, and yes, I did see the sign, but I also know how well people read signs. I think there's a lot more people that walk up there than you, you there believe, is. and I think they go up there because it's wide open, and they walk, and oh, they let their dog it's, run. and It's, it's perfect. It's a one it, mile. If you right. go up and down every lane, I mean, I walked it just the other day myself. It's a safety factor for a lot of people do with a, a level, flat surface, and some of our sidewalks are in disrepair, and so it's a safe. Just to clarify, we didn't have to call anybody out. Fortunately, our own call person, we had a burial anyhow, so I didn't call anybody out as far as overtime goes. It was. That's why we got the call. I got the call because it was a burial the right. next day. Yes. Yes. No, I got you. Also remember, where the cemetery is located. They're out of town folks. Yes. They're loose. Like coyotes. Very no. Just strays. Just strays. That whole burg edition, whatever it's called, that's out of city limits, but those dogs run wild. And they come into town. You, I mean, well, and there's also a lot of city people who let their dogs just run wild. Yeah. Okay, that's all I had. Okay. Mark? Couple things. Uh, last meeting I had a question on Chara Gardens, and I heard back from Greg. It's tied up in a bankruptcy court. There is somebody interested in it. But their money now is tied up by this. Anyways, he's we're going to stick with it and try to get it cleaned up. The other thing is, I'm wanting to know with the state park coming in, up with the news, can we be proactive on it instead of reactive? Can we start looking at things down the road like, can we build a, a bike lane not from on South Washington up to the square because we're going to be getting a lot of people biking from something to look at you know and maybe putting a kiosk down there by the bridge with a map of the city and a layout of the square and what restaurants we have and, and something like that but I think we need to look and, and seeing what we can do to help get people that are coming to the state park get them into town we used to have bike sharrows on Washington Street, but we've re. Yeah. Yeah. It's been it's paid. Covered. It's been covered over since, and so we can yeah. look at repaint. We've got the template. Yeah, it's I probably think. something that after we chip sealed, it's one of those things. It's <clears throat> not real high on the priority list that you remember. Uh, but yeah, I can visit with Jason about repainting like sharrows. That's not a big designated deal. Designated bike lane, route, but bike those sign. gutters are not going to allow it because right. that street really crowns. Well, and you got parking on both sides. Luckily, it's big enough that we can put the sharrows in and still not have an issue with traffic on the, that South Washington stretch. And maybe we could even look at sidewalks down here on the east side. About the last two blocks in there, there's no sidewalks. You know, figure out maybe. We might have to work with the landowners. You didn't have a nice sidewalk there, but once you get up about two blocks, two and a half blocks, and it it clears up. I mean, right. I just think we need to start looking at it instead of waiting until three years from now and saying, "Whoa, you know, we need to look at it." 
Thank you. Josiah. Nothing. Joel. <laughs> Kim. I'd like to congratulate Mr. Ford and Mr. Dressler on all their years of service for the police. And I want you, Corey or Matt, to t I've had a lot of complaints about those grates in front of Casey's. They're going to pop a tire or they have to drive around them. Or can you, can you talk about it in public so why we're not fixing, why we're using those grates? Well, the grates are there for storm sewer purposes. And that was a very poor design back when it was put in I mean those those the, unfortunately it's only about eight or ten inches deep so that they sit in a ledge and they start crushing with those semis what's happened is it's crushed down that's why we put those plates out there uh, Jason's put in uh, some rubber underneath it and we actually re-tapped them and re-epoxied them last week uh, someone pop a tire on those bolts no I, not that I'm aware of uh, at least it hasn't come through our office that I'm aware of. Yeah, I've, yeah. Uh, so, I'm not aware of it. Well, and, and I know they're noisy. I can tell you the, cons the the design that we're going with on 54 Highway, that will not have a grate or a drain system right there. Uh, the new storm pipe will actually come across over by Casey's, pick that slump up that kind of floods anyhow, and, and reroute it down South First Street. So. It will be fixed through the project, and we've been, it's a, it's a Band-Aid, guys. Unfortunately, until we get the project underway, we didn't, well, that and I had a fix, and KDOT didn't like it, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, I was going to say, we need to bring that up. We also got told that we, we thought we had a fix for it, and then we got told, no, you're not doing that. Yeah, they wanted so, me to have engineering studies and everything else, and I'm like, guys, we're going through engineering process. There's no need to do that. This is a temporary fix for a year or two. And basically, I was told, no, not unless you have a design. So <laughs> uh, we are, it will be taken care of. It's, it's, there, unfortunately, the public's going to have to bear with us for a little while. We'll keep it safe. It won't damage vehicles, but it's going to be noisy and it's going to be the way it is for a while. Okay. There's just nothing we can do about it. Because they don't like it. <laughs> oh, I, I, trust me, I don't like no it either. Does, yeah. I don't and I know Jason's crew doesn't like it because they're out there tightening bolts down every so often. Um, this last one that he did, he went in and they, after a while, they start, it starts jarring and it starts pulling those bolts back out of the concrete. So he's re-drilled them and put longer bolts in with epoxy and hopefully that will hold them a little bit better uh, for the short term of a year to get us into construction. So. That's the hope. Anything else? Okay, Josiah, I'm going to take your, your spot. I have a list tonight. <laughs> First of all, I want to congratulate Gary Kimball on his retirement. Um, 35 years of dedication for his service with Iola is commendable. Uh, and then today, I had a situation. I made a home visit with one of my elderly clients, and somehow a stray dog got into the her garage and I want to thank officers Ford and Reeves um, I had called for animal control is animal control just like a part-time yes. yep and she's actually not there this week her doctor had surgery okay um, well officers Ford and Reeves um, took probably 30 minutes to coax this dog out of the garage and um, we're working on trying to find the owner and I just it was very much appreciated the the uh, my client she's 104 and um, it was a little bit stressful for us but anyhow um, which leads me to the dog waste stations and all of that I also think that I, I really don't want to get another text or picture um, and we cannot be everywhere and I just want our citizens to understand that but we are not there to babysit these dog owners they need to be responsible and held responsible for it and I echo the bike lane situation I shareos whatever right now is the time for us to um, to act on it with the fact that we've got the um, 54 highway project going so if our sidewalks it's unusual for cities to have sidewalks as the path for a bicyclist and yes I understand it is the safer option but that's up to the bicyclist on if they want to be 
in the road or not. Um, and then my last thing is uh, Kim and I have met with Max and Candace Grundy on the maps. Um, the, last week and then again tonight and we do have some options uh, we're working on and we're refining them so hopefully in the very near future we'll be able to bring back to council about four options for a city map and that's flag 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 flag, flag. you had me confused there for a minute yeah yeah well i've got all this other stuff going on so yeah I mean, I, so I, city I think flag do cool stuff with the map too so <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's I'm sticking job. with it. That, that flag's a job, man. <laughs> <laughs> what Max is having to do? <laughs> so, anyways, that's all I have. Thank you. Corey? Uh, just to add on Gary Kimball's retirement, there's a reception at the fire department from 2 to 4. If you guys are available, you might stop by and uh, wish him good luck. Um, do what? Friday. Yes, it's Friday from 2 to 4. Friday, yes. correct. I'll come, uh, yeah, I was on my calendar for two to four when I had my We computer. did get the email from um, Carla. H Carla. Okay, great. Pat, anything for us? No, sir. Roxanne? Second. Roxanne, anything? No. Um, there's nothing <laughs> okay. on the table. Kim did a motion. Josiah <laughs> seconded. You have nothing, right, Roxanne? I'm hungry. She doesn't now. Anymore. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. You're adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Oh.